welcome to Goop Tales, episode 63, Conchita and the Rainbow Mountain. Conchita, what a sweetie pie. She was the apple of her father's eye. Those who knew her considered her a treasure. For an encounter with Conchita was almost always a pleasure. Unless, of course, she decided to cheat because she never, ever wanted to be beat. Chapter One Once upon a time, there was a sweet yet mischievous little goop girl named Conchita. Charm was her middle name. If ever there was a challenging situation, such as the local ice cream shop having only one scoop of chocolate left with a line out the door on a hot summer day, or an invitation to Miss Wigglebutt's boring piano recital that required a positive RSVP, Conchita would find a way to handle the situation with wit and charm and come out a winner. Oh my, I just read that mint chip ice cream is all the rage and it actually cools you down, she would announce loudly but nonchalantly, all while waiting her turn in the ice cream line. Suddenly, everyone in front of her would abandon thoughts of chocolate and demand a mint chip ice cream cone. I want a mint chip. I want leaving the last chocolate for Conchita. Mother, Miss Wigglebutt is having a piano recital on Saturday. And as you know, that is the day I have decided to focus diligently on my homework. Would it be possible for you to decline her recital for me? She would ask her mother ever so sweetly. Conchita was very, very clever indeed, and she almost always succeeded in getting her way. On the rare occasion when things didn't go Conchita's way, she was known to cheat, although she didn't like to look at it like cheating. Once during a math test, Conchita found herself face to face with a very difficult problem. 468 times 372. She wasn't a big fan of math problems, and this one was huge. Conchita tried solving it, but quickly grew frustrated and ran out of space on her paper. She saw Kudikanto turn in his math test and leave the room, and she grew very impatient. She wanted to run after him and try to get him to play with her. He never wanted to play with girls, and Conchita considered him a challenge. She looked around and saw Screenalina finishing up the huge problem. Hmm, I can just borrow the answer from Screenalina, thought Conchita. So, borrow, she did. She pulled out her tiny magnifying glass, saw 174,096 written on Screenalina's paper, and then she wrote down the same answer on her math test. Nothing wrong with borrowing, she told herself. Then she popped up from her seat, turned in her math test, and scurried out the door after Cootie Counto. Cootie Counto! Cootie Counto! She screamed across the schoolyard. What? Called back a rather annoyed Cootie Counto as he eyed Conchita with suspicion. Cootie Counto made it a rule not to play with girls, and he made that very clear. Conchita believed that rules were meant to be broken, and she was always up for the challenge. She knew she would have to come up with something good if she were to get Cootie Counto to engage with her. Do you know Fat Cat? She called out. Cootie Counto stopped in his tracks. He had heard of Fat Cat from Balfred many moons ago, but had never encountered him, and he had always wanted to see Fat Cat. I know where he hides in his garden. I can show you, sang out Conchita. 
Conchita had no idea where Fat Cat hid in his garden, but she did know where he lived. So she was cheating just a little. Follow me, she sang out. Cootie Canto couldn't resist the chance to see the infamous Fat Cat that wore a jingle bell. So he turned around and followed Conchita to the most stunning gardens he had ever seen. The gardens were in full bloom, with yellow tulips gleaming like sunshine, fuchsia-colored peonies popping out, mysterious green vines that crawled up walls, violet irises with yellow flecks, and many tree-lined paths that led to secret hiding spots. Conchita turned and looked at Cootie Canto. See, I told you. He was immediately annoyed and retorted, You told me what? You told me that I could see Fat Cat. I don't see him. Conchita sighed a long, drawn-out, Well, as she concocted a plan in her head. She remembered how Fat Cat loved to scare Balfred and make him cry. So she started sobbing. (laughs) What are you doing? asked Cootie Canto, who was thoroughly confused. Conchita looked at him as she continued sobbing and cracked a little smile. She was cheating, of course, fake crying to get Fat Cat to appear. It was only seconds before they heard a jingle bell headed their way. Conchita looked at Cootie Canto with a triumphant smile. He's coming, she whispered. Then she started sobbing again. Fat Cat turned the corner and saw Conchita smiling at Cootie Canto. He knew exactly what was happening, and he wasn't happy about it. I'll teach that little cheater a lesson, he thought to himself. Then he turned his back on them and slowly started to walk away. Oh, Fat Cat, Fat Cat, don't be a fraidy cat called out Conchita as she followed after him. Fat Cat waited until Conchita was right on his tail. And then he turned and hissed the most terrifying cat hiss in the history of cat hisses with his jaws wide open. Conchita flew backward and landed backside in a bed of flowers colored like a rainbow. She hit it hard, and then she sank, sank, sank into the dirt beneath the flower bed and disappeared. Chapter 2 The dirt was damp and cold as it crawled over Conchita's tiny body. Her fingers pressed into the ground, and Conchita sat up with a spinning head and a very dry mouth. What's wrong with me? She sighed aloud as she tried to catch her breath, which was short and shallow. Altitude sickness, snapped back a sassy voice. Conchita looked up, to see a kind-looking brown horse staring down at her. Altitude what? She said with some fear. Don't worry, you can adjust. You're high up near Cusco, Peru, about 11,000 feet above sea level. That means you will get altitude sickness. You're really high up, in case you didn't know it, said the horse. Um, I didn't. I don't even know how I got here. Oh, wait, that mean fat cat scared me here, said Conchita, remembering what had happened in the garden. Well, you're here now, so you may as well make the best of it, replied the horse. I'm Contante, the singing horse, and I know all about altitude sickness. I take tourists to the Rainbow Mountains. You need to get used to this climate. You know, acclimatize. Acclimate what? I don't even know what that means, snapped back 
Conchita, who was feeling tired and dizzy, acclimatize. It means you get used to the climate. You need lots of water, lots of rest, and some coca leaves. You can't cheat your way out of acclimatization. Conchita stared at him. Did he know about her cheating ways? Okay, then, I can do that. But, uh, what is coca? She said. Oh, yes. Coca is a leaf with all sorts of vitamins. You chew on it and it helps get more oxygen into you. The oxygen is what you are missing up here, sang out Cantante. Conchita thought about all of this. Rest, water, and chewing on coca leaves. It all sounded very boring to her. She wanted to see the Rainbow Mountain. Um, where is that Rainbow Mountain you mentioned? That sounds fun. Can we go there? Contante smiled and nodded and then said, See, sí, see, sí. but after you do as I say, hop on me, he said as he knelt down. Conchita managed to plop herself on Contante's back and off they trotted. Contante took her to a barn on the city outskirts. The barn was Contante's home when he wasn't taking tourists to the Rainbow Mountain. He made a bed of hay for Conchita and gave her a jug of water. Then he told her to rest and drink as he got coca leaves. I will return in several hours with coca leaves. And then we set out to the Rainbow Mountain, said Contante as he looked at Conchita with watchful eyes. Okay, she replied, crossing her fingers behind her back. Then Contante left and went off to gather coca leaves. As soon as he was out of sight, Conchita popped up. She drank a little bit of water, but it was warm and unpleasant tasting. She took one final gulp and then walked outside the barn and dumped the rest so that Contante would think she drank it all. After dumping the water, Conchita looked around at the countryside and saw beckoning stone ruins up on a hillside. Like all of the goops, Conchita couldn't resist a good adventure, and these stones were calling her name, so she set off to explore. Conchita ran over hills and hopped over ruins and got a view of the beautiful city of Cusco in the distance. She spent the entire afternoon climbing on rocks and gathering pebbles. Later on in the day, as she stopped to gaze out over the hills, she saw Contante in the distance. He was headed back to the barn. Conchita started to panic. She needed to get back to the barn and pretend like she had been sleeping or he would never take her to the Rainbow Mountain. She raced down the hillside and ran as quickly as she could, even though her legs felt like bricks and her breath was shallow. She was determined to get back first. Just minutes before Contante entered the barn, Conchita lay down on her bed of hay and closed her eyes. Contante quietly walked into the barn and looked over at Conchita and smiled. A few minutes later, he nudged Conchita. Time to wake up. You've been asleep for hours now, he sang out in a friendly voice. She didn't move. Come on now, Conchita. If you want to go to the Rainbow Mountain, it's time to get up. Still, there was no movement from Conchita. Contante began to grow worried and walked outside the barn, where he saw the empty jug and a puddle of water. Then he went back and looked at Conchita. He saw in her hand two tiny white pebbles that came from the ruins. Contante let out a low whinny in anger. Chapter 3. Conchita slept through the night, barely moving. Contante patiently waited 
nearby with coca leaves. When her eyes finally opened, Conchita looked groggily around the barn and remembered all that had happened. She looked up and saw Contante above her with the coca leaves in his mouth. He was staring down at her with a very stern look on his face. I'm, I'm sorry, truly I am, said Conchita as she reached for the coca leaves and started to chew on them. They were bitter tasting and she wanted to spit them out, but she didn't. Then she drank down the entire pitcher of water without saying a word about its taste. Contante just looked at her and said, Chiti never pays. I feel so much better. Can we still go to the Rainbow Mountain? Asked Conchita sheepishly as she looked up at Contante with large doe-like eyes that were irresistible. He whinnied and nodded (coughs) and leaned down for Conchita to hop on and off they set for the Rainbow Mountain. Along the way, Contante told her how the Rainbow Mountain had been buried for hundreds of years beneath ice. As the ice melted, it released minerals into the mountain that turned it into shades of reds, yellows, purples, and greens. If you saw the mountain on a dry, clear day, all of the colors would be in their most brilliant state. Visitors now came from all over the world to visit the Rainbow Mountain. The Rainbow Mountain needs to be respected, warned Contante. She has been hidden beneath ice for her entire existence. And now that she has been discovered, strangers come and walk over her every day, wearing her down. She's alive and very powerful. Don't take from her, just admire her. We must all do as the mountain commands, said Contante. Or what? What happens? asked Conchita. Contante shook his head. You don't want to anger her. I have seen her red stripes turn the deepest, darkest red of rage, and I have seen them, well, do things, he said. Conchita's eyes grew wide. What do you mean? Please, please tell me what happened, she implored. Contante then told her the story of how once, shortly after the Rainbow Mountain was discovered, a group of visitors came to see her. Two of the visitors wandered away from the rest and off the paths they were meant to follow. They disobeyed all the rules and went on to an area of the mountain where there was still ice. They set up cameras, and put equipment on top of the mountain. This part of the Rainbow Mountain was sacred and she was still hidden beneath her ice blanket. The mountain didn't want visitors walking on her. The red stripe grew angry, so angry that it shook. And as it shook, the visitors on the ice slipped and fell. Down into the Rainbow Mountain they slid until they were swallowed by the red stripe, never to be seen again. This story made Conchita desperate to see the Rainbow Mountain. She wanted to climb on it, touch it, and admire its beauty. She felt emboldened. I will respect the mountain, I promise, said Conchita. An hour later, Contante and Conchita arrived at the foot of the Rainbow Mountain. Conchita looked out and caught her breath. It was more brilliant than she had anticipated. The mountain was covered in stripes of reddish pinks that melted into turquoise blues and then shifted into golden yellows. Every stripe was a different color and shape. I I want to touch it, said Conchita as she hopped down and picked up a handful of yellow earth. Contante laughed and sang out, Follow me and stay close. Then he started to walk up the mountain with Conchita right behind. The Rainbow Mountain had gentle slopes and they walked along the spine as Contante had instructed. 
As she stood on a pale blue turquoise stripe, Conchita leaned down and picked up a beautiful blue stone when Cantante wasn't looking. One stone can't hurt. I just want to hold it, she thought. Conchita rubbed the stone between her fingers as they walked along. She looked down at it and thought about how wonderful it would be to take it home as a souvenir. Then she tripped over a tiny red rock and slipped. She slid down, down, down the side of the Rainbow Mountain until she stopped right on top of a thick red stripe. She could feel the heat rising from beneath her and looked up to see Cantante staring back down at her with dread. Chapter 4. Conchita froze. She felt like the red stripe was holding her in place, and if she moved, it would send out a very fiery burn. Don't move, called out Cantante. Conchita nodded back at him, not wanting to even speak. Heat started to surround her. At first, she thought she was imagining it, but then she looked at the earth surrounding her and it looked different. It was turning an even deeper red color. The shades that had once been light pink darkened into a deep magenta. The little blue stone lay not far from her. Conchita looked at it and wished she had just left it where it belonged. Too late now. The earth beneath her started to shift and she could feel herself start to sink into it. Oh, please, no, she said softly to herself. I don't want to be swallowed by the Rainbow Mountain. She looked up to see Cantante running along the mountain back in the opposite direction, away from her. The earth shifted again, and Conchita sunk a little deeper. Heat rose from beneath her, and Conchita tried to grab onto the dirt and push herself up but it was too hot for her tiny fingers. At this rate, it wouldn't be long before she sunk all the way into the Rainbow Mountain and disappeared. She sat in silence as a tiny tear rolled down her cheek. She thought about her friends back in Goop World and how wonderful they were. All she wanted now was to return home. Off in the distance, there was a low horse whinny. First one, and then another, and another. Up on the spine of the Rainbow Mountain, she saw Cantante headed back towards her with two horses following him. They carefully walked down the mountain towards Conchita. Cantante led the way all the way to the edge of the red stripe where Conchita was sinking in. We respect you, Rainbow Mountain, all of us. The horses who bring visitors here every day. These are my friends. We have all shown you nothing but respect, and we promise to always protect you and keep visitors where they belong, he said. The two other horses nodded and then gave a neigh in agreement. (laughs) We've come to ask you to release Conchita. She doesn't understand the ways of the mountain, but she will now. She meant no harm. Then Cantante and his two friends bowed their beautiful heads towards the heated, deep red stripe of Rainbow Mountain in reverence. The earth grumbled a little and moved, but Conchita didn't sink any further. Cantante then turned around and flicked his long, silky tail right out towards Conchita. Take it now, he called out. Without hesitation, Conchita reached up and grabbed his tail, holding tight as they galloped away. Once they were at the spine of Rainbow Mountain, Cantante stopped and nodded at his two friends who turned and left. Then he turned to Conchita and sang out, Lucky, 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 that red stripe was going to swallow you. I know. I know, 
said Conchita, near tears with relief. I have learned my lesson. I know, said Cantante. Hop on. Then he took her to a cool blue part of the mountain and pointed her in the direction of a beautiful eggshell blue stripe of earth. Go, sit there, he said. Conchita was confused. The blue earth is much more forgiving, and if you have truly learned your lesson, she will know, and home you will go. Conchita smiled softly, gave Cantante a hug, and then gingerly made her way to the spot he pointed out. She sat down on the blue earth and looked out over the Rainbow Mountain, just as the sun started to set. She was humbled by the beauty before her and silently promised to never disrespect nature. Then she felt the cool blue earth beneath her shift, and before she knew what was happening, it opened up and Conchita had sunken in. The soft earth poured over her as she slid through it until she popped out of it, right back into her backyard in Goop World. Standing up and dusting herself off, Conchita looked around for Cootie Canto. She needed to tell him all about the Rainbow Mountain, but he was nowhere to be found. He was in the land of a thousand lakes, but that is a tale for another time. Hey there, it's Maria. Thanks for listening to Goop Tales. If you want to listen to another one, all you have to do is click on your screen and you can. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Goop Tales and you'll always be notified when there's a new one. You can tag us on social media at Goop Tales on either Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to hear your questions and comments. And you can also leave me a voicemail if you go to gooptales.com and use the little prompt in the sidebar. Okay, I will see you in the next Gooptale.